All right, this is chapter six, section two, which is about rocks. We're picking up in your chapter six notes, right where we left off last time, middle of the second page. If you don't have those notes, you can download a copy from your teacher's website. In this section, we're going to talk about the three different types of rocks. But first, let's see if we can figure out the difference between rocks and minerals. What's a mineral? We did this last time. Minerals are solids that are non-living, crystalline, and formed by nature. These are requirements to be a mineral. To be a mineral, you have to have a crystal. And to have a crystal, you have to have a compound. Now, here's the thing about a compound. A compound is something like H2O. H2O means there's two atoms of hydrogen in every molecule of water, and that is an absolute requirement. You can't mess with that recipe and still get water. You can't have H3O or H3P. You have to have H2O or else you don't have water. For minerals, the recipe is very specific. For rocks, the recipe can be messed with a little bit. A rock is a solid mixture of one or more minerals. And here's the thing. You can have a little bit of this mineral and a little bit of that mineral and a little bit of that mineral to make a rock. It doesn't have to be the exact same amount each time. Think of it like this. All eggs are the same. All flour is the same, basically, and all chocolate chips are the same. But you can combine them in practically an infinite number of ways. You can make chocolate chip cookies. You can make a chocolate chip biscotti. You can make chocolate chip bread. You can make a million different things from those same three ingredients. And all of these three, three things are different. Rocks and minerals are the same thing. Minerals are like the ingredients. All the ingredients are always the same. Quartz is always the same. Dioptase, which is just another mineral, this pretty blue one. Um, it, they're always the same. Tourmaline, this pretty green one, they're always the same. But you can combine a little bit of this, maybe a whole bunch of that, and a teeny weeny bit of that, and you can get different types of rocks. A sedimentary rock, a metamorphic rock, an igneous rock, and here's the thing. You can mess with the formula. The recipe doesn't have to be the exact same amount of quartz and the exact same amount of di dioptase. And you can add a different mineral if you want to. You can add some amethyst or you can add some diamond and you can get a sedimentary rock or a metamorphic rock or an igneous rock. The recipe can vary and you can get different products, but the ingredients are always the same. So think of minerals and rocks like you do ingredients and recipes. The minerals are like the ingredients the rocks are like all the different things you can make from those ingredients. The rock cycle is um, what we call the process by which rocks change in their shape and their composition. Composition just means what they're made of. And the shape, of course, is their shape. On Earth, the rock cycle is constant. It's very gradual and very often it's very subtle but it's not, it never stops. Rocks are always changing what they're made up of and what they look like. And we call that the rock cycle. There are three different rocks, three different types of rocks based upon the way the rock changes. You could be a sedimentary rock if you form in one way. You're a metamorphic rock if you form in another way. And you're an igneous rock if you're formed in yet a third way. You might know how these rocks are formed already. If not, stay tuned, we're about to do it. Sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are rocks that are made of grains of sediment and pebbles that flow from a mountain, typically. We call that erosion, you know that. And they settle down into a body of water, usually. We call that deposition. And then over time, those layers build up and they get squished together. Squished together, meaning that the spaces between all those pebbles and all that sediment, the spaces between them get smaller. The air gets taken away and it gets replaced by cement. The same as the cement that you might use if you were building a sidewalk. It's the same thing. It's a mineral dissolved in water. Minerals dissolved in water can make this naturally occurring cement that can be used to hold together rocks. Rocks we call sedimentary rocks. Now this sedimentary rocks only happen at Earth's surface. Deep within the, in the Earth, different types of rocks are formed, but on rock surface we form sedimentary rocks. There's no heat, there's only a teeny weeny bit of pressure, only like the pressure from the rocks above them maybe, or the pressure of the water above it, but no, no great amount of pressure. In order to understand sedimentary rocks, you wanna know these four definitions. I know you know what erosion is, and I know you know what deposition is. We've sp certainly spent a lot of time on them. Compaction 
means something's becoming more compact. The spaces between them are getting smaller. And cementation means that cement is gluing them together. Now, in this case, it's naturally occurring cement. When sedimentary rocks form, since they often form at the bottom of a body of water, like a lake or whatever, they form in layers, and we call those layers strata. You probably can figure this out. It's kind of like a tree ring. You know how the tree rings, the older the tree is, the more rings it has? Well, the older this rock formation is, the more stripes it's going to have. And these stripes, you probably can guess, are much older than these stripes, stripes up top. We call the layers or the stripes, we call them strata. And the process of forming them is called stratification. This is a pretty common um, sedimentary rock called breccia. This is sandstone. This is conglomerate. This is shale. This is something called chert. And those are different types of sedimentary rock. Now, metamorphic rock is when pieces of the earth move, causing tremendous heat and pressure to change a rock. Now, don't think that the rock is melting. It's not. It's getting heated, but not enough for it to melt. If it were melting, that would be the third type, the igneous rock. But when rocks are exposed to a lot of heat, or when they're exposed to a lot of pressure, then we call them metamorphic rocks. So here we have a diagram of rocks over here. These rocks are not melted, but they're really close to this magma. So these rocks might turn to metamorphic rock. Here we have two pieces of the earth being pushed together. And this rock here is under a lot of pressure. It might turn to a metamorphic rock. Amphibolite is a good example of a metamorphic rock. Hornsfels is another metamorphic rock. Marble is a metamorphic rock. Now igneous rocks, you might be familiar, are formed from melted rock that cools. Now that melted rock could be magma, which is melted rock underground, or it could be lava, which is melted rock above the surface of the earth, like from a volcano perhaps. And whenever they, when they harden and cool, we call them igneous rock. Um, I-G-N, like ignition or ignite, means fire. So magma underground, now if this were to come up to the surface, we'd call it a volcano. And the, if it cooled up here on the surface of the earth, it would be an igneous rock. Or it could even cool underground and be an igneous rock underground. If it's formed below the earth's surface down here, for whatever reason, if this volcano cooled down a lot underground, that's called an intrusive igneous rock. Intrusive igneous rocks form inside the earth. These two words um, refer to two different types of intrusive rocks. Plutons are when they're balloon shaped and pegmatites underground are when they're teardrop shaped. And that's just two different types of intrusive rocks. Extrusive rocks are rocks that have exited the earth and they are formed from lava, obviously.